because it happens so often that you typically have your variable which is holding some sort of number and it happens very often that you want to have that variable increase itself just by one so as we saw in the last video um, you can use the very convenient uh, plus equals operator to increase the variable by one and not only by one but even by other numbers however as I said it's very common to increase a certain variable by one as we will see so the creators of C++ made a little convenience operator which is the plus plus operator plus plus takes whatever is inside the variable and just adds one to it and puts it back in that variable and that's all there is to it if x was 8 so right now after this it'll be 9 actually there is something else to it this is the postfix plus plus operator which means that the plus plus or it's called the incremental operator because it increments it increases the value by one um, is right now after the variable so it's like a postfix to the variable you can also use the plus plus va uh, operator before your variable and it will al also increase uh, it'll do the same thing it'll take whatever number is inside x and increase it by one the difference is this keeping in mind that this is an, ex an expression which at the end will yield to us the result of what's inside x so that I could take advantage of that and maybe assign that number to a different variable such as y equals plus plus x as I spoke in a different video that um, expressions are pieces of code which give out which yield a certain value so over here after this is done uh, the value of x will be um, an expression which we can use to put into the variable y so here's where the difference of uh, the postfix and the prefix plus plus operator will be because if I do prefix what happens is first of all x uh, turns into 9 and then um, and only then will uh, that number be given to y However, if I put this afterwards, what happens is, first, the number uh, that's inside x is given to y, and only afterwards will x be incremented by 1. So it's really as if, uh, first, uh, this is happening over here, first x is being given to y, and then the plus plus is happening on the x. That is, of course, when you put the plus plus after the variable if you put it before the variable then first uh, x is incremented by one and only afterwards is the results of all that given into y so it's a big difference because with the prefix in our case y will be nine and with the postfix in our case y will be eight so keep that in mind, the difference between the prefix and the postfix incremental operator. So play around with that also. And while you're at it, try out the minus minus operator, which can also be postfix or prefix uh, with the same effect as I said about the plus plus operator. And that's all there is to it. There is no such thing as a multiplication multiplication operator or uh, double division or stuff like that there's just plus plus and uh, minus minus plus plus will just add one to the variable and minus minus will just take off one from the variable I will remind you again that it's very important to uh, take a break and practice a whole bunch of stuff and that's the only way will how you'll really internalize everything that you've learned so go ahead and have fun. Try weird stuff like plus plus y and uh, x plus plus and, and try to put that all out on the screen and 
see what happens. Right now, for example, this uh, command over here has two different errors. Um, one is about this uh, assignment operator with the uh, uh, printing magic, which we will talk about a lot later. And another one is trying to uh, add 1 to Y when we actually didn't give Y anything. So this will make an error while your program is running, saying, oops, why are you trying to do stuff with Y, like adding numbers to it, if you didn't even give him a initial amount? So to fix this, obviously, you have to first give Y something, at least 0, so that we'll know that when we're trying to add 1 to Y, uh, it will end up being 1. That's very important. Never use a variable which you only declared and you didn't uh, give anything inside of it. Uh, if you try to use a variable that doesn't have anything in it, you will get a big error during the program. And your program will probably crash at this point. A program that crashes means basically that it came up against a big problem which uh, cannot possibly be solved and the program will have to stop right then and there and exit the program. Here's a little fun tidbit. Um, there is a programming language that is called C which uh, actually in many ways resembles our uh, C++ language and it makes a lot of sense because the people who invented C++ uh, based it on the C language and that's actually why we call it C++ because we are using the plus plus operator on the C language meaning that uh, C++ is pretty much exactly the C programming language plus some more stuff. The next thing we'll start talking about is conditional programming which means that most of the time not everything and all the whole entire program of yours uh, will be executed. Not every single line of code that you typed up will be run, will be executed. Sometimes different stuff will have to be skipped over, sometimes not. For example, if your program, like a game, is uh, rated T14, um, you would maybe want to find out what is the player's age, and then you would want to test if the player is over uh, 18, then you would take one course of action, you would probably continue the game. Um, but you would also want to test that if the age is less than uh, 18, then you would take a different course of action, which would never happen if the age was 18, and uh, you would maybe want to stop the program or something like that. So your code is going to be branching off in two different directions and sometimes maybe even many more directions depending on different criteria uh, different stuff will either happen or won't happen and lots of stuff will be skipped over so this is called conditional programming when you test if something is true or if something isn't true and according to that you instruct your program uh, which path which branch of your program to do so before going to the specifics, let me just explain how it is going to look a little bit. Uh, it's something like this. If blah blah blah, then take this course of action. Um, else, if it isn't true, so then you would want to take a different course of action. So, of course, uh, one of these only will be executed and the other one will be skipped over depending on if this is true or not. As you can see, if is another basic C++ keyword as well as else. So we will see in the next video exactly how do you use this if and else and how powerful this allows us to control the flow and the path of our program.